So we get called out here. They're saying that the key is not working on either side. We're just getting that click noise. Okay. Don't know what that click is. There's no. Okay. So when we bring the door closed, you can see it comes to right here, and then it starts hitting the, this rock. Now it closes fully. There was our culprit. Right there. <laughs> box box now. Yep, works just fine. There you go. Today's episode is brought to you by Triton Plus Key Machines from Lock Labs. You have the price point of some of the import machines with US based technical support and a high quality cutting machine. This is the machine that we use to cut our keys and engrave our keys with our company logos and phone numbers. Hello, this is Wayne here and we're going to go over what I really do throughout uh, a day. And yes, I'm going to have to take pieces. You'll have to understand that I'm going to take you with me. You're going to be able to look right over my shoulder, but you'll have to understand each day that I have, sometimes we're able to really, you know, knock some calls out and get 9, 10, 11, 12 calls ran in one single day in a large service area where you have to drive a lot in order to get to each one of those calls. So to show the efficiency and show what it really takes to take a business that makes under $100,000 a year to a business that makes multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, it's going to take some serious work and you as an individual owner, if you're just a one person show or one man or one woman shop uh, or mobile service, you can bring in half a million dollars a year. This is not unreasonable for one single person to do that. And I'm going to show you how you do that. But you have to understand for me to take real world jobs that we're doing and be able to protect my customers um, security and privacy and be able to uh, put that on so that you can kind of see and edit it so that you can see and you can extract that value out of it. We can't always put one whole day together just because we're on one job. That one job may not allow me to be able to film there or there may be a different circumstance or uh, the customer might be extra paranoid. They might see a camera and they might not want it there. Uh, just a lot of different things that can come into play when that happens. So you, I'm going to take you through a day where it would be possible to run all of these calls and this would simulate a normal day, but you might see me wearing a different shirt. It might be a couple of different jobs from different days strung together, but that's what I'm going to take you on a, on a tour as to what it would be like to run with me for an entire day and we're going to hit job after job after job after job and that's really what it's going to take if you want to take your business your locksmith or your security business or any business for that matter up to that next level what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to really start focusing you're going to have to start really getting up earlier you're going to have to hit the, the, the ground running you're just going to have to go 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 and you have to move the money needle you got to move that money needle over to the full side to where your your bank account is full and that's what i'm going to teach you how to do and that's what part of this documentary is about is to really show you how to do the things that we do and what it takes it's going to start with getting up early it's going to start with running you know 8 10 12 hour days 14 hour days and it's going to take doing that over and over and over again to get the results that you want and I'm going to show you exactly how we do that. And I'm going to show you the jobs that we do to be able to accomplish that goal. So come on, let's go take a ride. This portion of the documentary is brought to you by Freeman Manufacturing. Check out Freeman. All right, so we've got another rekey to do here. This is for one of the restricted keyway systems here, uh, MX Alpha. Um, got five doors to rekey. One of the nice things about the restricted keyway system is if it's done properly, um, you don't have to actually rekey every time. Now unfortunately this particular establishment did not take our advice 
and they did not put it in their employment contract that the cost of rekeying would be withheld from their last paycheck to each individual employee if this key was not returned. Therefore, they had a hostile firing, and now the person has kept the key, and they have no legal action to uh, retrieve that key from them. So they have to rekey at this point. But moving forward, we told them, hey, the point of this is that this cannot be copied at any of the copy kiosks or any of the hardware stores because we're the only ones that can get this blank because we have a contract to work with this company and their restricted keyway system. So all in, as long as moving forward, they discuss with all of their employees and tell them you are being issued this key and there is a number engraved on that key, which it is. I just don't want to uh, give that number out. Uh, even though these are the old keys and it wouldn't matter anyways. Um, but the point is, is if each key and number is assigned to a person or employee and that key goes missing, that employee is responsible for that key and rekeying the facility can be withheld from their paycheck uh, if they sign that contract and agree to those terms for their employment. In that case, then the cost goes to the employee, not to the company itself. Great solution for high turnover <laughs> applications. So we're going to get these rekeyed and uh, hopefully they implement that and then they don't have to deal with that anymore. So thanks for watching. As mentioned, GMS makes high quality, high precision cylinders for every locksmith that you can possibly think of in different keyways and restricted keyways for your customers to okay, So we got called out here. They're saying that the key is not working on either side. We're just getting that click noise. Okay. Know what that click is there's no movement ooh that actually might get it you know what Let's see if I can put it on. there it goes got it so it was a pressure hold something is in the frame or in the back here somewhere causing that to bind up like that because when we work it here Works fine. Let me work it here. Works fine again. So that means that it's a pressure or alignment issue, not a lock and key issue. Okay, so when we bring the door closed, you can see it comes to right here and then it starts hitting this rock. Now it closes fully. And there was our culprit. Right there. <laughs> oh, the box unlocks now. Yep, works just fine. There you go. Here we're on a location where the safe would not open up. So they called to have service and we were able to get it open. I changed the batteries, that's always going to be the first go-to is change the batteries with good quality Duracell or Energizer batteries. Unfortunately that did not open the safe on the first or second try, so we gave the safe some vibration, shook the handle quite a bit, and then tapped on it with a mallet and we were able to luckily get one more open without having to do any drilling or destructive work on this particular unit. Because we had so much trouble getting it open and they had problems from the beginning, it was my assumption and conclusion that the safe lock should be changed and that was probably where the problem was. Even though we did get it to open, it's not a good idea to leave that lock on there because it's not going to be reliable. So we put on this new American Security ESL-10 lock that is going to provide much better longevity. You can see here it is working in perfect order. Now we're going to have a vault door installation. After we get some anchor holes drilled into the concrete, we're going to use some tap cons to literally bolt a chain directly to the concrete above the area where we're going to be hanging the vault door. Here you can see some straps that we're going to use the J-bolts to attach this strap to, to be able to lift the vault door into place. You can see that we've got that chain up above and a 
uh, two ton come along, or I'm sorry, a one ton come along, 2,000 pounds. This door is rated at about 1,500 pounds. You're going to see me working the come along right now and slowly bringing the door up to the upright position and erecting it so that it can go into that location. Normally, we would like to have that vault door placed the other way so that the handle and the lock are down. And that way we can actually bring the vault door towards the bottom and pull it up the other way. But that did not happen in this case, unfortunately. However, we still needed to stand it up in the condition that it was in, and this was the most efficient way that we had to be able to do that. Now you'll see that we had to, we ran out of room and we had to reset our chain. We had to re-drill holes and move our tap cons even higher. In order to get the vault door off of the pallet and to set it for the final position, we had to set it on two blocks and then remove those blocks and set it directly onto the ground and then move the strap to set it in its final location. Once it's been set and all the J bolts are set, we then go ahead and wipe the entire thing down with glass cleaner for that professional touch. Here we're gonna do a quick inspection of the safe after it's been cleaned with the glass cleaner, making sure that we document the vault after the installation. The most important part of this entire procedure is the part that I'm doing right now. You have to open the vault door, make sure that it opens, and that's the very first step. The second step is holding it in each one of these different positions and angles, and then letting go of the door completely. The door must stay in that location where you leave it so that it does not move. If it moves, then your door is not level and not set properly. You need to make sure that everything is level before leaving so that everything is safe. And here is the finished product. This next call is brought to you by Arrow and Asa Abloy Lock and Door Hardware for the Locksmith and Professional. We're actually going to be installing an Arrow brand commercial grade one cylindrical lever set lock on this next location. This is gonna be a storeroom function and I'll explain how understanding the different functions can make you quite a bit of profit. Our next job is gonna take us to a location where we're gonna install this arrow storeroom function lock. This is why it's gonna be very important to understand the different functions of different locks that are on the market. You can see that what's currently on here is a entry function lock, meaning that it has a button with a little knob on the inside that you can push in and unlock, or you can push in and twist and have it locked permanently. Unfortunately, the fire marshal did not like this setup on a mechanical room and came to the determination that this door needed to have a permanently locked door that could not physically be unlocked or left unlocked without a key. That means storeroom function. So understanding the functions and the different functions of locks in your profession and industry quite literally is the difference between you getting the job and not. This customer understands that we know our fire code and that's why they brought us out to this job. This job landed about $500. Our next sponsor is PacBlue. They offer a cloud-based enterprise access control system and we have actually installed this on our very own office, my personal office, and it works absolutely amazing. It works directly off of your cell phone and is extremely easy to install. Our next call brings us to a very small home safe that was discovered, and we're going to use this HPC tubular lock pick to go ahead and pick this up. Um, there's really not anything involved with this one. It just opens so easily. I quite literally didn't have to hardly do anything. I literally stuck the pick in, and it pretty much just opened right up. So that's why I decided to show this one. Uh, we could take this pick, now that it's been picked and decoded, and we could actually make a key for this if they wanted to do that, they chose not to pay for that service, but that is why I love my HPC tubular lock pick from Hudson. Here we show that HPC tubular lock pick. This is my favorite tubular lock pick and opens just about everything. Alrighty, so we got a call to open up a garage door. Now that could mean a couple different things. When I'm getting this call, 
I need to try and gather as much information as I can, but my customer doesn't always know exactly what we're talking about and know the exact lingo and verbiage that they need to use too. So when I get to this job, I can have several things happen. There might be a little lock on the outside that I might be able to pick very quickly. Uh, usually just four or uh, usually four tumblers in there or four little wafers in there, four or five, and picks really easy and opens right up. Could mean that there's a man door that goes to this garage too, and it might have a schlag or some kind of other lock on there that might be a little more difficult to pick. Uh, and we, you might have a mortise body lock on there. We just don't know. So we try and gather as much as intel as we can. And now we're going to be at the job site. And I'm going to bring my little magic bag here. This has all my little goodies in it. All my little lock picks and different things that we used to get in. And then it's all about assessing what the job is, what needs to be done, what the end result is, and what the quickest uh, way to do that or the path of least resistance is. So come on and let's go check it out. Alrighty, so they've given me a code to come into the main part of the house to then see what's uh, going on with the garage door. So one of the first things that we want to do is we want to make sure that there's nobody actually home. You could have vagrants, uh, and here in Colorado you could actually have bears. Uh, I literally opened up a door and seen a mountain lion chewing on a deer outside one of the doors that we were going to reiki. So it's very, very important for our own safety that we make sure that we clear the house and make sure there's no other people, no other threats, no other animals, no other stuff here. And that's just one of the hazards that comes with um, not having the client home. Okay, so as we come through the house, we have here, yes, it is a schleg. The bottom one is not locked, but the deadbolt definitely is. So we can tell because we can turn this knob, but this one is not uh, unlocked. So we need to unlock this and that'll give us access to the garage. Now we have a little bit better understanding as to what we need to do here. Okay, so I've set all the pins using this leashy tool. And now you can see that there's no key inserted in there. The lock has picked it. And now we have access to the garage and we can see What's going on with this garage door? Looks like the linkage has come undone. And so actually has nothing to do with any of the moving parts. So we'll actually release the red rope and then voila, now this door will open manually if that's what we need to do. Just like so. Okay. And there you have it. We didn't know exactly what the solution was gonna be, but we used the process of elimination to come in, make sure we had a safe job, make sure we had a clean job, and in about five minutes, we've made almost $200. That's, thanks for watching. If you're interested in becoming a locksmith, check out my training page, waynesloxshop.com. This portion is sponsored by Big Red Safe Locks. This is my mechanical lock of choice due to its ability to survive the endurance tests. Here we have a safe loaded up for one of our customers, picking it up from a showroom floor and taking it to a customer's location. We will not show where we delivered, just that we delivered. Well, the light's a little bright out that way, so I gotta be here for the so that we can get this on film. Uh, just got done with a one job and now we're headed to another one. There is a magnetic lock that is not releasing. Um, so we're going to have to deal with that. Um, basically we'll just start process of elimination, try it with the exit device, uh, try it with the code from the outside, see if there's one side that's not working. It's a double mag lock, so it's got uh, two doors uh, that go into one, which is a great way to lock up two doors without a center mullion or having the obnoxious vertical linkage. That's really, really good stuff. Um, and that's why we chose that system to, to go on there. But unfortunately, they're having an issue with it. So now we're going to have to go ahead and provide that and see what happened with it. All right. So, the... okay, that one unlocked. That's good. So we're having him test this from the outside uh, so that we can verify exactly what is happening. And so every time he disconnects it from the outside or puts in the code, it tends to release. Okay. Here's our actual switch, so when that's compressed, it just doesn't look like it's pushing that back far enough. So we're going to bend this little tabby back. That should really... Let's go ahead and shut the door and let's try that. Okay, so we're going to actually shut the door here. We're going to let it relock, and then I'm going to push every time. 
released. See it push. Sweet. There we have it. First time. All righty. So we were able to get that figured out. Uh, it turns out that the exit device was not releasing because there's an internal little micro switch in there, and the little tab on that micro switch was not depressing fully. Therefore, when the exit device was collapsing, it would not allow the power to be cut. Uh, we determined this by I had the I had the guy. Uh, that was there, the property manager put in the code over and over and over and over again from the outside. I had him do it like 10 times, and every single time it was fully successful uh, unlocking both sides. So that's kind of what we had going on there. Um, more concerning is that uh, when we installed the system, we had told them uh, that this is, you know, like kind of a life safety issue here, and unfortunately, um, they added a uh, deadbolt at the top of the door. Uh, that violates everything that we told them that they should not be doing. Uh, so, you know, we can't make the customer, you can only lead the horse to water, as they say. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can really do about that, but we disclose and remind uh, and tell them this is not ADA compliant as far as what I understand, ADA compliant uh, and fire code, NFPA 80 fire code, uh, ADA code, uh, building code, fire code, basically it violates almost everything you could possibly violate. And, I mean, we're not the police, so, you know, what are we going to do here? Uh, we installed the system correctly. Uh, we told them and advised them that they could not do that. They went ahead and did it anyway, and then we have warranty work. Comes to find out they did it. Um, all we can do is document it on our paperwork and say, hey, you know, we told you this was not going to work out very well, and um, that is what it is. And if you guys get dinged on your next fire inspection, that's on you. It's not on us. And we're here. We have documentation that says we told you repeatedly not to do it, and we were told you repeatedly that once you did it, you needed to undo it. But we're not law enforcement, so it's just going to have to be what it's going to be. And they'll either take our advice as professionals, or they'll learn their lesson the hard way when somebody gets trapped in there, or like I said, they get a fire inspection and epically fail. But that's up to them. Uh, bottom line is, we were able to bend that little tabby back, um, and we were able to uh, go ahead and make that so it would release every single time. Uh, we were able to take the exit device off. There's a little wire on that little micro switch. Just bent that back a little bit, and what do you know? All of a sudden, it worked repeatedly, time after time after time after time. The lock was getting power. The lights were on. These are all indications of good diagnostics. Being able to diagnose an electronic access system is absolutely essential because you have to understand how the components work so that you can understand how to diagnose it. You usually start off with voltage and connections and wire and all of these other things, but this one, that's why the first diagnosis portion was, does it work from the outside every time? If it does release every time, then we've probably got an issue with the release portion of it, which is on the inside which was the actual problem. So once we isolated that, we figured out exactly what the problem was. Everything was working, it just wasn't working to that certain degree. So once we got everything working as it should, everything's working good. So for more information, check out the website below. Thanks for watching. Here you can see that micro switch, which we just bent that little wire back to engage the switch a little more. Our next sponsor is GKL Products and the Hinge Doctor. These are absolute money makers in most conditions. I have seen some dumb things in my days, but this takes the cake, I believe. Check this out. What do you think the problem is here? We got called out to this call because their door was not able to be latched shut. Well, take a look at this. The ramp side is supposed to go into the frame. So their door doesn't shut. Oh, well, it, it goes shut, but then it opens right back up because this is pointed in the wrong direction. This is what happens when you have handymen trying to install lock hardware. I can't even shake my head enough at this. This is insane. So, okay, let's add some fast forward speed here. Undo those two screws that hold the knob in place. Pull that strike out, or that latch, and flip it around. 
the correct way so the ramp is going towards the secure side and put everything back together. Okay, so now, see, the lock side needs to have the ramp side headed that way. So let's try this again. Imagine that. The door shuts and it doesn't just come open when you pull on it. Okay? It shuts and actually locks. Like it should. I also, see how we've got this line right here? You can tell where it's hitting the door and the frame. I want to look at this line and I cut out just a little bit more. It was right on point, like right next to it. It was barely latching. So if I left this job, what would happen is in three to six months, it would stop working again because the door would probably sag a little bit and then it would start riding on the faceplate here. Uh, and that's not a good thing. So I used a carbide burr to cut this down just a little bit more so that the bottom of this belly is past the line where it's hitting the door here. So that way we won't get this maintenance call. This quick set lock will probably fail because this is the old pin tumbler style. Uh, that latch will probably fail long before that door ever gets over there. Um, and people ask, why didn't we use the hinge doctor? Well, we can't. We don't have enough room and there's no room over here for it to go. It would have been nice to use the hinge doctor to pull this door back over, but unfortunately that is just not an option in this particular situation. That's why we don't let handymen install locks, unfortunately. So it is what it is. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Uh, just to give you a little background information on this one, um, this... Uh, she couldn't lock her door, and so she was very concerned about that and had just moved in, I guess. Uh, and of course, for a young female to be living in a situation where she can't lock her door, that's a big problem. That's a big security problem. We came in, we fixed it, we got her safe, got her secure. It's about 6.30 at night, so we added this to our full schedule today. So this is the customer service aspect of the industry. No way was I going to go home and leave this poor lady so that she couldn't lock her door tonight. So that's just what we do at Tri-County Locksmith Service. Thanks for watching. See you later. For more information on how to be a sponsor, if you'd like to help support the Locksmith documentary, please contact Wayne directly at tricountylocksmithservice at gmail.com. For those of you looking to seek more education and become a locksmith, check out waynesloxshop.com. Scan this QR code, apply today, and enjoy a seven-day free trial.